All right, dear Secretary General, dear BDT directors, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the ITU and UNICEF, it is our honor to welcome you to the inaugural Giga Connectivity Forum. Welcome to Geneva, welcome to the ITU. The event, as you all know, This event, as you all know, brings together government's representatives from ministries of education, telecommunications and regulators, as well as GIGA partners and key players from the international Geneva. And we all gather here today with one singular objective, to connect all schools of the world to the internet by 2030. And we hope that this very diverse ecosystem that we gather will give us the inspiration we need to meet these objectives. Our names are Nobuntu and Yannick. Nobs is with UNICEF, I am with ITU, and we are going to be your masters of ceremonies for the coming few days. So Nobs, what are you most excited about for the next two days? As we know, connecting schools in the world is not only a technical challenge, but also very much all about enhancing collaboration, community building, and knowledge sharing. This is why we're here today. Before we begin our two-day program, we would like to highlight some important housekeeping elements. First of all, we would like to start off by acknowledging our online guests as this event is being live streamed. This event will be held in English without interpretation. And our beautiful screens on the left and to your right have a QR code which would love for you to subscribe to our newsletter. This will enable you to keep in touch with us and stay up to date with all the exciting things that will be happening as Giga continues to grow. We also invite you to make the most use of this forum today. Mm -hmm. The success of the next couple of days rests solely on us. As a community, it is up to us to make sure that we are engaging and collaborating with each and every single one of us. The challenge I present to you today is to make sure that you engage with someone you have not met before. So, without further ado, with our community, we are happy to have you here with us today. This is absolutely true, Nob. So, without further ado, it is our pleasure to introduce Mrs. Doreen Bogdan-Martin, Secretary General of the ITU and a longtime advocate for universal connectivity in education, especially for girls and young women everywhere. Mr. Secretary General, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Yannick, and, uh, and good morning, excellencies, ambassadors, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to welcome you here to the ITU uh, for the very first Giga Connectivity Forum. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be sharing the stage with, uh, with my colleague, uh, BDT Director Cosmos Zavazava, uh, and of course, Thomas Devine, uh, who's the Director of the Office of Global Innovation at UNICEF. And uh, of course, ITU and UNICEF have been kind of hand in hand in this effort for a number of years. So uh, great to have you with us, Thomas. Um, so our goal is quite clear, and that's to connect every school in the world to the internet, uh, to give young people everywhere a voice, a choice, and an opportunity in today's digital revolution. I think challenges like this are, are too big for any single player to tackle on their own. And, and that's why uh, this forum is so very important uh, because we brought together the necessary stakeholders. And I do want to recognize this morning we have, uh, we have digital ministers and ministries, we have education ministers and ministries, we have regulators with us, we have the public sector, we have the private sector, we have the governments of Switzerland and Spain, 
the regional government of Catalonia, and the cities of Barcelona and Geneva. And of course, we have a number of key international experts and representatives of the Swiss ecosystem that have joined us this morning. I think this combination of stakeholders, as well as the, the vibrant international Geneva community, is really our strength. And it's also a key pathway to universal school connectivity. There is a fundamental truth about this initiative, and that is that connectivity is an integral part of our societies as well as our economies. Bringing connectivity to schools creates a positive and social ripple effect that can help to benefit entire communities. As some of you may know, we launched uh, GIGA, it seems like yesterday, but it was back in September 2019, uh, some seven months before a global pandemic struck us and really um, put the truth to the test. And I would say almost overnight, the pandemic forced millions and millions, hundreds of millions of children out of their classrooms and here, uh, four years on, we continue to grapple with the consequences of the pandemic, in particular for young people that did not have access to connectivity because they did not have access to, they did not have access to education because they did not have access to connectivity. As you may have seen a couple of days ago, the UNSG launched the Sustainable Development Goals Report for um, 2024, in his intro, he called it sobering. Um, some call it scary, as others very disappointing. Uh, but what I, would, what I would take from that report is that it highlighted, of course, the pandemic's profound impact, uh, and it, it, it notes in particular the scarring impact uh, as the SG put it, when it comes to uh, the impact on education, on global education. Today, uh, when we look to technology, there's no doubts that technology has expanded educational opportunities. But regrettably, it has also widened inequalities, leaving millions without access to education, especially in marginalized and low-income communities. And I think that makes GIGA more important than ever before. Uh, to date, GIGA has helped to, um, to bring uh, educational opportunities to some 8 million students. Uh, through increased access to connectivity. And these are young people that live in remote, uh, in rural areas where traditional educational resources are very, very scarce. And so if we look, for example, to the remote mountains of Kyrgyzstan, uh, where young children have to trek to school uh, by donkey, or if we look to Kenya, to the, the Noon Kopir Primary School, which is just some 30 kilometers outside of Nairobi, but also a world away from modern education. And when we look to those two examples, and of course we'll hear over the next two days many, many more, uh, we see what an impact uh, connectivity has had on those two examples and on those young people. Uh, in a very short period, they have now access to learning, uh, enrollments have increased, and academic results have also improved significantly. I think this forum comes at a very, very crucial moment. In a couple of weeks, uh, we will gather in New York for the Summit of the Future. On the table is the Global Digital Compact. Uh, that is currently being negotiated uh, as we speak this week. Uh, Rev 3 is coming out. That document underscores the importance of GIGA, and the UNSG sat at this podium just a couple of, a couple of weeks ago uh, to the ITU governing body, the ITU council, and he called on us to intensify efforts on GIGA. 
um, and, and the need to double down and ensure that we get connectivity to all. Uh, we will also hear, I think, this morning from our friend, uh, the Executive Secretary of the Economic Commission for Africa, uh, the Executive Secretary Gatete. Uh, he will also share uh, some of his thoughts about what has to happen on the GIGA front. Of course, we note that the African Union has put connectivity, not connectivity, but education uh, and link to that uh, connectivity as the theme for 2024. Uh, so I, I think it is the moment, the crucial moment, to double down on our efforts. And when it comes to GIGA, those efforts actually start with mapping. Again, something we'll be discussing over the next two days. You've all seen our maps. Uh, Chris likes to share our maps. Those maps have too many red dots. We need to make sure that those red dots, uh, which indicate the non-connected that we get those red dots to turn green to signify connectivity. I think it's also time to share uh, challenges, uh, some of your, your challenges that you may be, may be seeing. Of course, we want to build on best practices, so we'll be looking at that over the next couple of days uh, because we recognize that um, each country, each circumstance is unique. Uh, and we want to make sure that we take that uniqueness into account. Uh, we do have, as our amazing co-MCs have indicated, we have the QR code on the screen, so scan it, uh, and you can sign up for the new GIGA report. Uh, we're looking forward to growing this community. Uh, we do have some new friends in the room today, uh, so I encourage you to scan the QR code and to, to join us. Um, as we uh, advance in, uh, in our gig operations through our tech center in Barcelona, as well as our um, soon to be opened global connectivity center that we're establishing here in Geneva. And so ladies and gentlemen, I would really like to call on you today to open up your data for public use through GIGA to think about mentoring a country that's not currently part of GIGA, and also to help us further build a multidisciplinary global community that's dedicated to advancing school connectivity. Because we firmly believe that connecting schools to the internet is one of the most urgent and one of the most defining challenges of our time. And so together, let's join forces, let's accelerate progress, let's unlock the power of digital teaching and learning, and let's make school connectivity a lived reality for every young person and every community everywhere. Thank you very much. Thank you to our Secretary General for the opening remarks. We invite Dr. Cosmas Lakison Zavazava, our BDT Director, to share his opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I think we are lucky because the marriage between UNICEF and ITU is a heavenly marriage. It is a natural marriage and uh, it is sanctified. We, let me tell you a story. I was in one country a few years ago, and one lady asked me a question and said, in my country, I see that when we build roads, we do it very well. And after five years or three years, the telecom operators come and start digging. Uh, and they say that they are putting in place optical fibers. Why is it that when they are building the roads, they don't just, they build the roads at the same time, lay out cable fibers? And at that moment, I couldn't answer that. So I hope as we build new schools, we integrate the issue of connectivity so that we don't do catch up and it will be even easier for us to map, to know the location of the school, but at the same time, 
the infrastructure which is available. And I think that is very important. Today, we know that the most active people online are those between the ages of 15 and 24. And in the UN language, we call them the youth. And that's a dividend because we would like the next generation to be driven by digital. And that is very important for us. We still have 2.6 billion people who remain offline, and that's not good for business. We would like to make sure that everyone is on board and they have a world of choice and they can decide what to do with their connectivity. So this is of great importance and high priority for the development sector. I think you heard from our Secretary General the importance of connecting schools because that way we are making sure that we correct all the ills, the divides that exist today. The divides between boys and girls, divides between the young and the elderly, divides between the disabled and those that are abled. Someone said disability does not mean inability. So we should do two, give them an opportunity to enjoy the digital world. But we should also, of course, take into account those who live in remote rural areas to have the same access as those in urban areas. In the development sector, we have, after every four years, what we call the World Telecommunication Development Conference. And the last one was in Kigali, Rwanda. And I see the representative of Rwanda. Thank you for hosting us. Uh, we adopted the action plan which is valid for four years. And we are, the member states adopted Resolution 87 on school connectivity. I will just summarize and paraphrase. Uh, it instructs the director of the Development Bureau to make sure we give added efforts to connect every school and every young person to ICT services. We should set standards for school connectivity and providing targets aligned to the global targets of universal and meaningful connectivity by 2030. We should develop evaluating models for affordable and sustainable approaches and financing with special attention to rural or remote areas. And finally, we should assist the member states and sector members, private sector and the industry, in developing policy, regulatory, and financial frameworks that can help connect every school to the internet. We have that mandate. And I'm sure that our colleagues in UNICEF, UNESCO, and many other UN agencies do focus on this important issue. We know no one single institution can do it without others. It is therefore gratifying to note that our relationship, which I have described as a resilient relationship of marriage with, UNESCO, with UNICEF, uh, lives and is resilient. And I can assure you, we will get the job done. As we look towards global school connectivity, we believe that we must engage the private sector. For the private sector, has the resources to invest. When we identify gaps, it is not just for pleasure. It is for us to open new doors for the private sector to come and invest and close the gaps. And as you know, ITU is technology neutral, so we don't really care. But we are just returning from Kampala, Uganda, where we had the regulators, the global regulators, symposium where we had ministers on the policy side, regulators on the regulatory side, but private sector on the side of industry to make sure that there is a harmony. You have a policy framework. You translate it into a regulatory framework. The industry takes advantage of the framework. So that is something that we believe we should be working on to make sure that universal school connectivity becomes a reality, no matter what station of life you are in, whether developed, least developed, landlocked, emerging economy, or advanced economy, it is important. 
Our campus is also drawn by the five priority areas adopted by the last World Telecommunication Development Conference, which dovetail exactly with what we are talking about today. The first one meaning affordable, meaningful, universal connectivity. That speaks to infrastructure and access, and it has to be affordable. The second one relates to creating an enabling environment, which I have already alluded to by speaking to the Global Symposium for Regulators that we had last week in Kampala. The third one, digital transformation, of course, that drives economies and social development. And the th fourth, resource mobilization and international cooperation. And that's important. You alone can do it, but you can't do it alone. So it's important for us, and we have been very fortunate. We have had many partners coming to us and working with them because they see the results that we are delivering on the table. And finally, cybersecurity is important. And when we are connecting schools, we have to keep the kids safe. And that's important. So we also have the child online protection. So GIGA does not stand on its own. It's part of the bush, if you want. It's not just a tree. And that's important for us to integrate all these elements, the skills development, infrastructure development, keeping the young people safe. So cybersecurity is of paramount importance. Uh, I would like to say that uh, we have a host of projects. Some are linked. We just launched the Global Together with the Secretary General. We just launched a project on problem mapping, infrastructure mapping. Uh, at the Global Symposium for Regulators, valued at about 15 million euros. That is important, and that integrates exactly with what we are trying to do. Instead of duplicating effort, building the road first, and then coming up to dig and roll out optical fibers, we want to do it at the same time. And that is important. We will save and optimize the resources that are available to us. I would like to say coordination is important at the global level for harmonization of practices, but equally important at national levels. We have the ministries of education, we have the ICT sector, and in terms of regulation, we have come up with what we call collaborative regulation, that we should not only focus on the ICT regulated framework, we should also focus on other sectors, financial inclusion with the central banks, education, energy, etc., and it's important. So interministerial coordination is critical. We cannot think in a straight line. We have sometimes to go zigzag so that we can interact with the ecosystem and save the ecosystem because digital is at the center. It is an enabler and a catalyst. And I think that is very important and it's good that we have both the ICT sector and the ministries of education to make sure. We expect the regulators to include in their universal service funds uh, funding for connecting schools because we cannot just be talking without connecting and that is very important. Uh, we would like to make sure that at an early age we educate our children to embrace digital in a safe environment and that is very important. So to summarize we should be taking advantage of our ongoing, in the development sector, we have many projects that are ongoing, open source, innovation, we have projects on uh, capacity building, universal meaningful connectivity. For us to understand why are those who are connected celebrating their, co their connectivity, it is because they go beyond surfing the net or just going on Facebook or sending an email, and that is important. Data measurement and data collection is also very much critical. On the 25th of June this year, we have released our ICT development index, which does not seek to name and shame, but simply to show you where you stand and so that you can grow better. And with this, I hope that we are going to take advantage of the interactions. I think the Master of Ceremony said clearly Try to meet someone you have not met before. As we connect the schools, let's connect with each other. Thank you very much. So thank you so much, 
Dr. Zavazava for these inspiring remarks and this overview you gave us on the overlap between the work of the BDT and School of Connectivity. We would like to give now the floor to UNICEF, Monsieur Thomas Davin from the Office of Innovation. The floor is yours. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much, Yannick. Good morning, Your Excellencies, and partners, colleagues. Um, warmest welcome to this forum for particularly the, the delegations from, I believe, 36, 37 countries who have dedicated more or less a week to be with us. Um, warmest welcome. We really look forward to connecting with you and, and hear and learn with you. I will, of course, not repeat uh, the framing that both Doreen and Cosmas um, have, have covered. We are so well aligned, there is no need for me to come back. This is part of why we value this partnership so much. This is part of why we have uh, seen so much progress already. Um, it's because we, we are really working hand in hand. I wanted to maybe think um, with you and, and offer thoughts for those of you who are, are dedicating the week and for those of you who are in Geneva dedicating at least two days to this forum, what we hope that you will get from that. And I will give you maybe three points. The first is a renewed sense of hope, determination, and energy. We know that this initiative started from a point of pain. We're talking about hundreds of millions of children out of school, nearly half of the schools in the world unconnected. We know that with every year that we are not connecting these schools and these children, they lack opportunities. They go further behind for those, from those who are connected and able to use technology to advance. Yet, in these five years, the progress is extraordinary. We are already present in supporting 34 different countries. We are hoping to bring that to 50 this year. The progress, the pace has been quite extraordinary. Part of it, of course, is the wonderful partnership that, that we have between these two agencies. It is quite special in the UN, I would say, um, to be so aligned and to, to be really working so closely together, both at global level, regional and, and country office. It's also really thanks to the champion and the sponsors that we have in the government of Switzerland, the government of Spain, that are hosting our two teams in Barcelona and Geneva. It is obviously also the incredible ecosystem that we find in these two cities and our ability to connect with private sector partners, with leaders, with champions from all walks of lives and private sector partners all around the world, in Africa, in, in uh, Europe, Ericsson is of course close to my heart because I live in Sweden, um, but there's so many others. And, and that is really for us what really makes this initiative so special. It is bringing multilateral, it is bringing country regulatory uh, ministers, education ministers, and city ministers together in one community with private sector partners. We learn with each other, we learn from each, from each other. Um, and that is part of what I hope you will find for the next two days. The second is really a range of insights and solutions. We know that the mountain you are climbing at country level is a hard one. We know that the challenges are many, that price remains expensive to get connectivity to everyone, and that the pace of progress, we are convinced from your lens, is always too slow. And yet again, we look forward for these two days to learn from you what is working, where are solutions that really are offering that acceleration that we all seek. We are going to be hearing from the GIGA teams about the tools they've created, which we hope can act as a foundation to so many of your efforts and as an accelerant to many of your efforts. Insights about also what does not work. Call it out, help us figure out solutions, options, and for those of you again, who are coming and, and dedicating some of your days from the Geneva ecosystem, please, please challenge us when you see us failing, when you see us not bold enough. That is really what we value in, in, in this forum, bringing together such an, an incredible diverse community. And the third point and, and insight we hope that you will gain from this is very much that, that connectivity, that connect to connect, that connecting tissue, that community of, of leaders, of champions that are really dedicating a lot of their efforts and, and, and their energy to making progress on this incredible challenge, but also a connectivity that goes beyond this room. We know that in this room we have champions of the connectivity layer. We have champions of that foundation for learnings. We hope that as we grow together, 
we can also bring you as champions to help us bring others to that fight, others to these efforts, others to support us, to champion us, to finance us, but also other countries so that you can help us bring your learnings to them and the sense of possibilities that your, your efforts are making obvious in terms of the progress those um, enable children to again have opportunities and choices and learning outcomes. With this, thank you very much and I look forward to being with all of you today and tomorrow.